the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 178, Isaiah 4 to 7. Isaiah's warning, do not make alliances. Through Isaiah, God showed us the blueprint of hope of continuing the history of Judah and Jerusalem through holy seed and stamp. First point, Isaiah proclaimed that there would be restoration for the remaining people and that there will also be God's glory. Isaiah told the people of South Judah of the ridicule they would face. In that day, seven women will take hold of one man and say, We will eat our own food and provide our own cloth. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our disgrace. On the day of God's judgment, all the men would die from war and the people would be in danger of being extinct. However, Isaiah told the people that the remaining people would be able to live through God's judgment. In that day, the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the pride and joy of the survivors in Israel. Those who are left in Zion, who remain in Jerusalem, will be called holy all who are recorded among the living in Jerusalem. Here, Isaiah refers to the coming of the Messiah. Listen, High Priest Joshua, you and your associated seated before you, who are men, symbolic of things to come. I am going to bring my servant, the branch. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David, a righteous branch. A king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. Second point, Isaiah used the metaphor of a vineyard owner to explain God. Isaiah chapter 5 is called the Song of the Vineyard. This was because God was the owner of the vineyard. I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard. On a fertile hillside, God is the owner of the vineyard, and the people of South Judah was the fruit. Isaiah writes that God hoped that the vineyard would produce good fruits. Sadly, God claimed that rather than good fruits, the vineyard produced bad ones. God spoke of judgment regarding this. Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hatch, and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. God told them that he would no longer protect them from their enemies and make South Judah fall. God told the people of their sins through Isaiah. The first was that they did not keep to a kingdom of priests, and rather was faithful to their own desires. In other words, they did not keep jubilee. In this year of jubilee, everyone is to return to their own property. The second was that they focused on humanly pressure. The third was that they lied continuously. The fourth was that they did not know how to distinguish between what was right and wrong. The fifth was that they were arrogant. The sixth was that they accepted bribery during trial. As such, God told them their sins and claimed that they would fall through war. As said by Isaiah, South Judah eventually fell. In the hands of the Babylonian Empire in 586 BC. Third point, 
Isaiah was called by God while the seeing a vision of the temple. Isaiah was called by God when God showed him a vision of the temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. After seeing this vision, Isaiah experienced being cleansed from the charcoal fire. God had warned Isaiah of the evil of South Judah people. He said, Go and tell these people, be ever hearing but never understanding, be ever seeing but never perceiving. God furthermore told Isaiah of his plans to send some people as captives and others to remain in Jerusalem. God told Isaiah how the people were to be punished, but punishment was not the governing point. As God had judged the world with a flood during Noah's time, but then had a plan for salvation. God likewise had plans to restore Jerusalem after judgment. This is why God called Isaiah. Isaiah proclaimed both God's punishment and restoration of South Judah. Fourth point, Isaiah warned Ahaz not to make an alliance. During the time Isaiah was called by God, those Israel and Aram attacked Jerusalem, but they failed at seizing it. This record can be found both in Isaiah and two kings. To firstly look at the record in Isaiah, when Ahaz son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, king resident of Aram, and Pekah son of Lamalia, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, but they could not overpower it. Now to look at the record in two kings, then resident king of Aram and Pekah son of Lamalia, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem and besieged Ahaz, but they could not overpower him. As such, South Judah was able to block the first attack. But during the second attack, things got serious and South Judah was seized by fear. Isaiah delivered God's message to the king and the people of South Judah. Although in theory they were in danger of being destroyed by North Israel and Aram, God told them not to worry as their reason for destruction was to be judgment. To Ahaz, who made an alliance with Assyria in order to protect South Judah from North Israel and Aram, Israel pleaded with him to change his ways. Isaiah told Ahaz to let go of Assyria for the following three reasons. The first was because they were not to give away any information regarding their brother nation, North Israel. The second was because if they became too close to Assyria, there was the danger of them bringing in Assyrian idols. The third was because Assyria could always decide to attack South Judah. Although Isaiah emphasized to Ahaz that Assyria was being used as God's tool, Ahaz did not care to listen. Instead, he was annoyed that Isaiah did not understand his political relations and strategies. However, Isaiah did not give up until the end and tried to persuade Ahaz. Ahaz was not to rely on Assyria or Egypt. This was because firstly, North Israel was decided by God to fall in the hands of Assyria. The second was because they were not to provide Assyria with any incentives to attack. The third was because Assyria could always inflict damage on South Judah. The fourth was because it was long to aid in the fall of their brother nation. The fifth was because there was the danger of Assyria's idols coming in. However, despite all these warnings, Ahaz did not listen until the end. Fifth point, God told Isaiah that the alliance between those Israel and Aram would fail. As proclaimed by Isaiah, North Israel fell and the people of North Israel 
became a mixed-race nation through the policy of the Assyrian Empire. God tried to make Ahaz listen multiple times, but he did not listen until the end. It was here that God told Isaiah about the coming of the Messiah. Ahaz was unable to see the tricks and the motives of the empires. Isaiah warned Ahaz not to believe in these powers and to believe in God, but Ahaz claimed that he did not want to test God and went ahead and predicted to the empires. Ahaz was not interested in God's power. He did not have the heart to rely on God. Thus, God gave Isaiah the message of Jesus Christ at this point. Eventually, South Judah was damaged by Assyria. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.